I'm Trey Ratcliffe, and I want to show you a quick tip here with Aurora HDR. You know, one thing about this program that makes it so amazing is that it has layers, and you can use layers to do some very interesting things. I'll show you right now with this photo from London. Over there is my robot vacuum cleaner. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my internet friends. Uh, welcome back to my studio. Today, we're gonna to talk about how you do layers in Aurora HDR Pro. Uh, so first of all, what are layers? Why do you want them? Well, they're extremely powerful because the overarching idea here is that you may want to do different kinds of effects in different parts of the photo. Uh, this is something I discovered many years ago. That I, you know, I would create something with another uh, you know, unnamed HDR program and um, it would do the effect on the entire thing. And it was really cool in some parts, but other parts just didn't work. So I would have to bring that photo into Photoshop, create multiple layers, bring in the original raw, mask in stuff. I mean, it was a, it was a major production, right? But now you can do it all inside Aurora HDR Pro with just a few clicks. I'll show you how easy it is. And I'll make a pretty good case of why you want to use layers too if, you, if you're not used to them. Okay, let's, let's do it, all right. So these are the three images we're gonna be working with. Uh, these are three images from the Tower Bridge in London. So I'm gonna bring and drop them right there, okay? By the way, there's many ways to get stuff into Aurora HDR Pro. Um, you can drag them in from Lightroom, Aperture. Um, we have, uh, uh, ex you can export from them. There's plugins, everything, right? So these are the three pictures, dark, medium, and light, all right? And I think I was on a tripod, I'm not totally sure. My memory fails me. So I'll just say alignment just in case. I'm not gonna do the other two. You really rarely have to click those other two ones. Um, they really kind of slow it down. Uh, like for example, chromatic aberration reduction. You only click that if you're shooting into the sun and there's some hard edges. Um, all right, so just like kind of click the bare minimum. You don't have to click everything, all right. Okay, so it's gonna pop up immediately and it's gonna look probably pretty good. Okay, bam. You know, I haven't moved a slider, I haven't done anything. Let's do a comparison of the before and after, again, before I moved a slider, so you can see the sweetness of Aurora HDR Professional. Here's the before, and here's step one, which, by the way, might be the final step for some of you guys, and that's that's totally cool, all right? There's, uh, there's, no, there's nothing that says you've gotta go tweak all these sliders, or pick presets, or do all this stuff, or even use layers, but, if you really want to bring some power and really bring kind of your own personality into it, your own style and just experiment, then you can really have a lot of fun with Aurora. Okay, let's get into it here. So sometimes what I'll do for this first pass at editing the photo is I'll just make a few little adjustments, okay? I'll just be very subtle, right? And then when I start adding layers, I'll get more and more extreme. Because remember, if on the base layer, if you do a ton of crazy stuff, then as you add layers, you're either undoing or adding more stuff, all right? So the idea is to start with a base layer and they get more and more extreme or experimental with different areas as you add layers. Okay, that's what we're gonna to try to do today, all right? So let's just amp up the HDR just a little bit. You see by default, it's plus 20. We're gonna move that up just a little bit. Boom, shakalaka. Let's soften it up just a little bit. A little bit of boost, okay? Add just a touch of uh, denoise here, HDR denoise. That gets rid of some of that, um, uh, some of that nasty noise or chunkiness in parts of the area. Okay, and then let's add a little bit of image radiance. This gives a little bit of that glow. Again, if I take it all the way up, you can just see how it gives that glow effect really, really nicely. You can really soften it and brighten it and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Let me reset this thing. So let's just do a little bit of radiance and a little bit of smoothness. All right. Good, so this looks pretty good. Um, let's increase the smart tone here a little bit. Drop down the highlights. Yeah, looking pretty sharp, pretty sharp. A little bit of contrast. I love contrast, actually. It's one of my favorite tools. Okay, so that's kind of good for a base layer, okay? That's sort of the foundational thing. Now, let's talk about what we're gonna do on the next few layers, all right? I wanna make the tower itself look kind of very moody and Harry Potter-ish you know, and just kind of, not dark and evil, but just like give it a little bit of dark chunkiness, okay? Uh, right now it's just a little bit bright and, and happy, okay? So I think it'll be kind of neat to have like these bright, colorful things going into sort of a darkness, all right, sort of a transition. I think it's important for, for photos to have a transition from one thing into another, all right? 
So that's gonna be one layer we're gonna work on together. And then the next layer we're gonna work on together is smoothing out the sky. Cause I can see it's still a little bit grainy and we wanna make it look a little bit more explosive as like there's some sort of like redness coming out of the darkness of this tower, okay? So these are the two things we're gonna to do together. All right, let's have some fun, let's go for it. Let's roll with it. So to add a new layer, right up here, there's this friendly blue plus button. Okay, you just click on it. You have a new mouse. So we're gonna call this one uh, Dark Tower. By the way, did you guys ever play that game? I grew up in the 80s and it's like this really weird board game. I, it's very obscure, probably nobody got that reference. No problem. Okay, so now what's happened as we've created this new layer is it zeroed out all this stuff. Okay, so we get to move everything around again. Awesome. So let's really increase the HDR look, okay? And just kind of keep your eyes on the tower over here, okay? As I move these things. Now, this is gonna affect the whole photo, okay? You can see, look at what it's done to the sky. It's made the sky totally cray cray. But remember, by using layers, we're only gonna paint in this part. That's the last step, by the way. We're gonna use the brush and just paint in this part. So don't worry about the rest of the photo. Just look at the photo that you wanna change. Look at the part of the photo you wanna change. Okay, let's make it a little softer. Let's give it a little boosty boost. HDR detail will look great in there. Okay, make it nice and detailed, you know, almost grungy. Okay. There's a few ways to darken that up, okay? Um, you can drop down the smart tone a little bit. That'll darken it. Uh, we can drop down the highlights and the mid-tones. That'll make it nice and dark and chunky, okay? Another actual you know, way that you wouldn't think that does it, but does do it is image radiance. So if I do this, it kind of makes the brights brighter and the darks a little darker, okay? So you can see I go back and forth. It makes it a little darker there, doesn't it? And here's a little bit maybe of an advanced maneuver. Um, not too advanced, but I know this tone curve thing is often scary to people. Don't let it scare you. I know it looks like an EKG, you know, when you're in the hospital, but it's not that bad. Most simple technique for getting to know this tone curve is to grab it right in the middle. And you'll notice that as you move it up, everything gets brighter, and as you move it down, everything gets darker. So that's kind of a nice way to overall brighten or lower or darken your photo. So we're just gonna bring it down here, darken it just a little bit. Okay, right on, right on. There we go, just like that. Cool, okay. So, you know, once you make a lot of choices, you forget, you know, wh what the overall effect is, right? like a, a frog boiling in its own water, you forget, right? So you could hit this little orange thing and go back and forth and you see how much darker the tower is now, okay? Now, again, we're gonna go pick the brush, okay? Because we want to just brush in that tower area, okay? You can see the whole effect is still here. As soon as I click down, everything else will disappear. The, all those changes that I just made will disappear except for where I am brushing, okay? Now by default, the brush is at 50%, which I like. You know, I can move it up to 100%, but you can do multiple brush strokes and it will get a deeper and deeper effect, okay? So I'm gonna start brushing on the tower right here. So everything disappeared there, and I'll do another brush. Oh yeah, maybe a little bit around it too. Remember, there's nothing wrong you could do here, because you can always undo if you want to, all right? So like I went a little bit wide out here, so I'm going to unbrush that. I'll hit X to switch around to the other side, or you can click on the eraser, okay? So there's the brush and the eraser, which is the opposite. I'll make the brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. You can also make the brush smaller by moving the size of it right there. I just kind of like the bracket key. Let me brush right in the edges here, okay? Yeah, all right, looking good. Now, if I click this little eyeball for the mask, you can see exactly where I paint it, okay? You can see I still got a little bit much in here, so I'm gonna erase a little bit here. It's a nice thing about this sort of painting with masking. You, there's, no, there's nothing bad you can do because you can always softly undo it, okay? So let me turn off that mask. So let's look at the before and after the tower. See, you can now see how the tower is just a lot darker and a lot moodier, all right, right on. So now we'll add another one and we'll call it um, Explosive Sky. Sky, okay. Now, everything's been zeroed out again. All right, let's start out by really getting rid of some of the noise up there, okay? So we'll do a little HDR denoise here, a little amount, a little smoothness, smooth it out, smooth it out. By the way, another way to really smooth out the sky is to take this HDR look and move it, well, I'll do an extreme here, but if you move it all the way down, 
it gets super smooth. I mean, look at that. It's super smooth. Uh, but we'll, we'll move that up. Not just, not so extreme. Okay, we'll just take it easy. Just take it easy. All right. Um, let's add a little bit of image radiance to see what happens and increase the brightness. No, they didn't really do anything. Just kind of experiment like a kid. Like embrace your inner kid. Like you got your box of 128 crayons. Just go crazy, you know? Just have a good time. You can always undo stuff. I mean, grown-ups always take themselves so seriously. Like, oh, I'm going to break it. I don't know what to do. By the way, it's the same thing with your camera. People always come up to me. We do these photo walks all over the place. And they're like, I don't really know how to use my camera. That's You don't have to know how to use everything on your camera in order to take a good photo, right? Just like you don't have to know all these controls in order to make something beautiful. Okay, just play with it and experiment. All I have to know is a few basics. All right, what's going on here? What we want to do is try to increase, let's increase the brightness of those clouds a little bit, okay? Like this, oh yeah. And if we want to make it seem a little bit more red, maybe we'll increase the saturation of the redness in those clouds a little bit. Yeah, nice. And let's increase the contrast a little bit too to make them seem a little bit more um, contrasty and chunky. Oh yeah, ooh, look at that, it's looking pretty good. Now let's bring up the mid-tones a little bit to brighten them up. Okay, you can see I'm hitting a, whoa, look at that, holy moly. Um, you can see I'm playing with a lot of different controls here, okay. Um, and that's the point of it, play with a lot of controls. If it doesn't work, you could just go click minus and that whole layer goes away, okay. Unlike real life, you can, you can reverse your mistakes in, uh, in Aurora HDR Pro, okay. That should be our new tagline, by the way, Mac Fun, if you guys are watching it. That is a great tagline, okay. So I'll lower that a little bit more. Okay, now let's start masking in. Okay, so we got our brush here. We wanna make sure we're on the brush and not the eraser. B, okay, I'm gonna increase this a little bit. And now I'm gonna start painting up here just in the sky. Okay, a little bit of an explosive sky. All right, there we go. And here's kind of another pro tip is that even though I've just painted that, I still have control, right? I can still go in here and really increase the mid-tones if I just want the sky to blast up like that, right? Look, it just did it on the sky now. I can bring that back down to where it was. I was also thinking, let's go add a little bit of vignette in that too. Uh, let's drop this down. And uh, you'll see it'll get a little dark around the edges here. Okay, yeah, let's go even a little darker. Okay, because I like it. it. It starts out hot, coming out of the dark tower and then uh, it fizzles off in, into space and time. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, that looks sweet. All right, now let's try one more thing I didn't even think of until now. Uh, oh, by the way, if you wanna see the mask of what I just did, it's right there. All right, look at that. And you know, you can see I go over the edges a little bit here. It's a soft edge, it's all right, you know. This isn't brain surgery. You know, you're not gonna you're not going to pierce someone's aorta by accident. Just go a little bit over the edge. Actually, I think that's important because you have a little bit of a transition, right? You don't want to do this super hard edge kind of thing. Just keep it soft. Keep it organic, right? Have an organic flow with it. If you overthink it and you're being like super precise all the time, you'll lose some of the organic feel of the photo, okay? So just kind of drift with it. Listen to some music, light some candles, you know, have a glass of wine. Just kind of coast with it, all right? Have a nice time create something that's sort of in the flow, all right? Just don't stress out about it, have a good time, all right? Okay, so anyway, here's the extra thing I would like to try. Um, do you see how we have this rain-slicked pavement that always looks so nice? London, rain at night, wonderful. Let's go ahead and make this even smoother, okay? Or more reflective, okay? So we're going to add another layer. And we're gonna call this um, a super reflecto pavement. All right. For this, let's increase the smart tone a little bit. Okay. See that brighten the whole bottom. Um, speaking of brightening the bottom, let's head down here to top and bottom lighting. Now I know these quick tip videos are supposed to be about one thing, layers. And I, I always go off piste and show you all these various things. It's all right. Still largely about layers, all right? You're kind of getting the idea right now. You're getting in the flow, but I'm showing you a few different controls along the way. So here's the cool thing. We can increase the bottom tonality, okay? Which will brighten it up. And since, but that does it sort of in an even way, top and bottom, right? We want to tilt it. So this is a good chance to show you the rotation. Do you see how I spin this thing? It rotates. And then we'll go ahead and shift it down so it's just on the pavement, like that, okay? 
So we'll kind of increase that a little bit. Now, let's go increase the image radiance because this will really give it that nice glow. Oh yeah, let's soften it up, perfect. And nighttime is a great time to use this glow thing. Okay, so let's increase that a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, softness. And let's cool it off a little bit because I kind of like cool colors in a, in a reflection like that. Looking very nice, very nice. And let's increase the contrast just a little bit. Um, because as you increase the contrast, it increases the blacks. And I think the blacks really give the other colors their vibration. Okay. So now let's start painting in um, on, the, uh, on the ground here. Do, do, do. Painting with our brush, having fun. Happy little wet pavement. Oh, yeah. I'm, I should make a soundtrack. Um, all right. So let's look at a before and after what I just did. You can see how the ground is even more shiny, shiny. Awesome. Actually, let's amp it up a little bit more. Let's increase the midtones. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at that. Amazing. Let's increase the contrast a little bit more. Sweet. Beautiful. All right. So there we have it. Let's look at a, uh, a mask from right there. So you can see where I just painted over all that kind of reflecto area down there below. Awesome. Okay, so we have our three layers right here. You can see that we just did different things in different areas. But this is a fairly extreme example of layering. You don't have to add three layers to every photo. You might just add two. You might just want to get rid of the noise and smooth the sky, which is actually the most common use of layers, okay? Um, or you can do a bunch of different things as you figure out more tricks over time. Honestly, you'll fall more and more in love with Aurora HDR Pro the more you use it, okay? I promise, I do, and I use it all the time. Okay, so let's look at a before and after. All right, here's the before. And yes, we did go a little bit HDR extreme with this one, that's okay, right? Depends on your mood, how you feel. I am unapologetic about it. If you don't like it this much, you don't have to do it this much. You can tone it down halfway, but either way, it's super fun. And here we are you know, with a, my own personal artistic interpretation of, of Tower Bridge. Oh my gosh, I love London. I can't wait to go back. By the way, if anyone knows how to get me up into that tower, let me know, because I would love to go up in there and take photos. It looks amazing in there. It's like a whole castle on a bridge. Redonkulous. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my little layers demo. Um, as usual, leave uh, comments. Um, we have a full HDR tutorial using the new Aurora HDR Pro tool uh, that you're welcome to get. It's over an hour long. I do all kinds of examples. You'll have a ball. Um, yeah, I just love doing this stuff. Um, thank you for joining me. I've just recently started putting my little face, my little head, wearing different outfits. I have outfit changes between videos. Uh, down in the corner, it's a new thing. I don't know if you like it or not. Let me know. Um, anyway, just rolling with it. Thank you guys, thank you my internet friends, and I'll see you on the next tech video. If you don't already have the new HDR software, just click there on the left. And we also have a bundle with a new tutorial in the upper right.